Mamma mia! Welcome to the first episode of Kill James Bond of 2023. We're back, no, baby! I'm Alice Wrong. Caldwell Kelly. Eh. Second. Oh, fuck, is it? Fuck. All right. You know what? I'm not going to take it again. Suffer, you know? It's all right. You said, you said welcome wrong. to the first episode complain. of 2023 in the last episode of 2022 as well, so... For the third Maybe we time, should just start welcome every to the episode. first episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome, welcome to every episode of 2023. <laughs> time is a flat circle. <laughs> Um, you know, you. Are, I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you. You are not escaping the cycle of samsara, and you're going to keep listening to the same episode of this podcast forever. You are in time um, prison, um, and we are your that's jailers. Right. That's right. Alice Caldwell Kelly, my friends Abigail Thorne and Hello. Devin. Uh, How you doing? And we're still working our way through the Man from Uncle series. It's still good. It still rules. <laughs> it still rules. It still rules. It's like and three the or four why more. It rules, <laughs> We got to we got to the spy in the green hat, and you may be aware, right, that in the last Man from Uncle movie there was prominently a spy with a green hat, and I this the sort of like abiding sort of sea of emotions that I my I was like pitched upon as I was watching this movie is when's the fucking spy with the green hat. Gonna <laughs> Many show of up. my notes are just is like, it... there has been no green hat thus far. <laughs> there are various points people wear hats, and I'm like, that's not green! Oh, not only at various points, I started a count, a hat <laughs> count, before green Amazing. hat is Amazing. noticed. And I'm not going to spoil that number for you now, but suffice to say, it is high. And of course, we're introduced to, with a guy who is wearing a hat, which is not green. Yeah, immediately I'm thrown, so I'm confused, immediate... I don't know what's going on. I'm pointing at the screen, mm -hmm. I'm saying, well, who is this? What's happening? When are the Na'vi arriving? I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> the no. spy in the green hat, the way of water, yeah. Yeah, because um... I'm 22 and I grew up in the era of films after editing was discarded. And so now I, I don't know how to follow a plot anymore. I have no idea mm -hmm. what's of going course. on ever. Mm -hmm. um, they don't even give you like an intertitle, for like where it's like um, you know New York City yesterday or whatever. Mm. Instead, we're just thrown into I, I think it's like a fun fair or something yeah. like that, and uh, like it looks like San Diego to me, but I, I'm pulling that entirely out of my. The boys are anyway. at the fair. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm, they are, uh, and they're chasing after this this older guy in a grey hat who escapes them. Grey hat, less than grey. Write that down. Grey hat. <laughs> mm -hmm. There will be a briefing on the the color of every hat in this movie right. until we get to the green hat. Oh, yeah. um, uh, he he escapes them by just getting on a, a little cable car thing like slightly before them, mm. uh, and meeting up with his contact, a man seductively licking an ice cream the whole time he's talking. This to is Herr Luger, and um, I really like him because Herr Luger looks like a mongo. He has the build of a mongo. He's like really big and mm. jacked, and he's he's like crammed into <laughs> a tiny mean suit. By that? Um, but his voice, he's like a very very. He has like a very posh English sort of accent, and it's it's just very charming juxtaposition. I like mm, it. Absolutely. And Herr Luger is is helping him to escape um, with the help of two goons, uh, black and brown hat, respectively. Mm. Um, so so <laughs> they're chased after, and we get a we get a fight scene to the sort of like um, opening yeah, titles. Yeah, we get the, the traditional weird, man from Uncle, again. the traditional man from Uncle shit title sequence. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. looks like it's buffering. Yeah. It no, can, the yeah, what they're is, doing is they're trying to like do this like staccato fight scene where they've got a fight scene they're like speeding it up and then slowing it down so that the hits land with all the rhythm but the effect of it is that i was like fuck i think this this source is broken i'm gonna see if i can't find a different way to stream this one <laughs> yeah oh yeah every time this happens to me um we also can stop the clock on the time to uncle chop at one minute 59 although this is administered too solo by a thrush agent. Yeah, They've, like, yeah. Learned oh my this god. Technology. Got it off them. The thrush, the um, thrush chop. He gets thrush chops later on as well. I like that the. I would the, hate to be thrush chopped. I would hate to be thrush chopped. So it hard. sounds so much worse. Yeah, I think they make a cream for that. But anyway, uh, there's a car chase. Um, there's a car chase. Yeah, this is interesting. The car chase, like, this is the first time we see the interstate highway system appear in a chase scene. 
uh, in a movie from the 60s. And, you know, the sort of, you get the sense to, like, you know, the long American century stretches out in front of this movie. They're even filming it from a helicopter. And you know they're filming it from a helicopter because you can see the helicopter skid in the bottom of the shot that they haven't, like, cropped Whoops. out. I think it's good. Um, yeah, production values. It's like, oh, great. You know, this is, like, the next 50 years of, of Californian sort of, like, uh, both car and like helicopter related interaction. It's a straight line from this to like the LAPD, like chasing someone. Um, fantastic. And then, so they, they, they chase this scientist and the goons, and we get the perfect car crash. I thought we had the perfect car so, crash so where one of our spies is Holy missing, shit. where Solo is just lying completely dead on the ground. But instead, we get. <laughs> I want to try and describe this sequence yeah, of cuts please. quite precisely mm-hmm. here. Uh, a truck pulls out in front of Solo and Kuriakin. Cuts the theme music the off. Wi- very, very cool. Yeah. The windshield of of um, Solo and Kuriakin's car is instantly covered in cracks, and then the next shot is their car on its side, on the side of the road. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's yeah perfect. Perfect yeah, three-shot they, they do this really cool thing in Uncle where they're trying to show a car crash, which is it will show you an intact car, but they've just like moved it onto its side quite carefully. And it's like, wow, that must have that must have been quite difficult to crash and just like perfectly do that and not fuck up any of the car. <laughs> they love to put a car the on truck's its side. Doing, like, trick yeah. shots. <laughs> they love it so oh, yeah. much. Love to. Um All right. and the next the next shot is uh Solo and Kuriakin coming into work, like bandaged up. Yeah. Um, really good. Like one of them has his like arm in a in a like a sling. Kuriakin's got like a band-aid on his face. Uh because, you know, of their of their injuries. I would imagine this is how um, they come into work like most of the time. Mm-hmm. These oh, guys yeah. are getting in car 100%. crashes constantly. And then M mm. just like straight up tells them <laughs> the villain of the film. Oh, M. M. Does- M is suffering from <laughs> echolalia, right? Yeah. This is a problem with this movie because a lot of people do. He uh, <laughs> come in, come in, gentlemen, come in, come in. Sit down, sit down. Uh, he he has contracted the say everything twice symptom from the base, and you only live twice. Yeah, yeah. He went to inspect um, the ruins of the base, and he caught it from from a contaminated needle. Um, that's right. Or alternatively, um, he's an actor who's struggling to remember his lines. Uh, but my notes say <laughs> meeting Du Bois by the big globe. Yeah, they've got a big <laughs> orb. <baby. Yes. laughs> I, Waverly Waverly sort of has to have a, a silly ass table. Yeah. And this time he's a different one. He needs one, to have a thing that a t- spins. He loves it. It spins, yeah. It's it's a big, like, sort of domed table with sort of like a a half globe, like a hemispherical globe on it, and it spins it around so that he is able to go, you're going to Sicily on account of this this guy, and he spins it around to be like, that's where Sicily is. Mm, it's very it's really cool. Good. Really Really, really yeah. solid. But we we learn that the the guy, the scientist who they were chasing, Mister Greyhat, is a uh, Herr Professor Doctor von Cronen, who is a mm. Nazi scientist, um, and he's been. Yeah, uh, and it's very bold, mm. very bold for a U.S. series to be talking about uh, highly wanted Nazi scientists in the nineteen sixties. This is this came out in nineteen sixty seven. At the time when they were making this oh, movie, highly wanted <laughs> Nazi scientists were about to put these guys on the fucking moon. Mm. And um, Thrasher fucking paperclipped this dude. Um, oh, yeah. And yes. as always with Thrush, the operation is being run by an evil industrialist. This time it's an alcohol tycoon in Italy named Mr. Mm-hmm. Strago. What, what I really love about this is that he does the M, all right, what's the deal with this movie thing? But he does it to Ilya instead. And in the last movie, we saw him do it to Solo. And Solo is just like desperately trying to recall the information. Ilya, different story. Just fucking off the dome. Starts mm-hmm. listing this guy's yeah. exports, gives the tagline of his company. Hmm. Yeah, he Ilya knows perfect. what he's. It is good at his job. That's the thing. He, in fact, in yeah, this film, Solo does pretty solo. much dick. Yeah, and, like Ilya saves the day. <laughs> That's the overwhelming like <laughs> concept of this movie. Is Ilya is the only one who's good at his job? <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah, good. That's absolutely true. The one useful employee in Uncle. Um, so they go to Sicily, where they're, they're driving around in a jeep. Ha, hold up. And they <laughs> yeah, yeah, Robert hold Horton the makes up. a noise. <laughs> wait, a, wait a minute. Because oh, no, 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 that doesn't happen no, no, yet, no, no, because no, they get... And when they go, oh, you've got to go to Sicily, they play... <laughs> That's your Sicily music for the episode. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> 
and they're in the car and they're we lost are... and Robert Vaughn makes a baffling noise because they're looking at the uh, map. Yes, this is this is what I'm getting to. He he makes this beautiful noise when he he sees an Italian man. And I think what happens here is because he does the like hand gesture, the like, you know, fingers up, sort of palm down, uh, thing. And he makes a noise as if he is attempting to speak Italian. He does. This is a great movie for noises. It's a beautiful language. It's a beautiful culture. Um, it, you know, absolutely no notes, right? Mm -hmm. The um, incredible. I, I love this Italian man. If they ask for all directions, the ancient cultures of the Mediterranean. <laughs> uh, so they ask this Italian stereotype for directions, and he's like, "See, si, see, si, oh, oh!" And then, and then, as they, he gives the directions to Mr. Drago's estate, and he's like, "Yes, yeah, see, si, senor," like smiling and like very animated. And then, as they drive away, this guy just like pulls out a radio, goes. Yeah, they're coming up. I reckon they're from Uncle. Like, it's, it's really fucking it's funny. Very funny yeah. It's a classic of the he just left yeah. genre, yeah. or like uh, you know, <laughs> the reaching into the sort of like thing and pulling out a large radio. Yeah. It's this actor does a great job of making one scene, but like really understands the joke. <laughs> So at, th at this point, we have to see who he's calling. So we cut to Mr. Strago's villa, and we have to learn that Mr. Strago <laughs> I is love Mr. gay Strago. and a pussy. <laughs> gay? Is he gay? He's, a reason... he's such a dumb guy. I, I strongly believe that Mr. Strago is. There's there's a lot of homophobia going on there, yes. But he... Uh, well, Mr. Strago's played by... Well, we'll get to that later. He's played by mm. Jack Palance, by the yeah. way. Um, uh, le late of many westerns. And not playing a tough guy, for once. Um... Mr. Strago is this kind of like bureaucrat. He's getting a massage from his secretary, Miss Dykton. This name will be important later. And the first thing we see about him is that he thinks that she is being inappropriate. Like he's he's he knows his he knows first of all, Thrush has HR guidelines on sexual harassment. Yeah, first of all, much of better all, than Uncle. That's good to know. Yes. Yeah, I mean, clearly you pick your side, right? In the in the Cold War. They might be trying to like uh, take over the earth, but they have a much more robust workplace culture. Um, and second of all, he quotes them to her uh, in order to get her to stop, uh, I guess, sexually harassing him. Yeah, she's massaging yeah, sure him, how... and then he he says, "No, stop, get off! You're like too too aggressive. This isn't appropriate." And also, he tells her off because her dress is too hot. Yeah, it's sort of like you, you you give with the one hand, you take with the other, right? You, on the one hand, you have a robust culture against sexual harassment. On the other, you also slut shame your subordinates, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But you should always slut sh slut shame you your subordinates. But he he gives her the same advice that mm. that you know you give to a trans woman who's been out for about eight months, which is like the skirt is too tight and short, the neckline is too low. Like I know you want to wear this, <laughs> but like you, you got to give it. You got to like take some time to find out what your style is, and you don't have to necessarily enter the pink cloud straight away. <laughs> um, also, the other thing we see, uh, Alice, and I, I thought you would like this, um, is that Mr. Strago, mm. like, I think they're implying he has IBS because multiple times yeah. we cut to him in a scene and he's like, he's like clutching his stomach and like drinking something fizzy. And I'm like, oh, this guy has the shits. This guy be shit. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, this is a. He's, he's <laughs> always doing this guy's that. shitting out his ass. The shits. Yeah. Um, it's representation, mm, yeah. right? Um, yeah, and thank God he's not in a Bond it, film because I cannot imagine how that would be used against him. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Bond it. doing the sort of like Ronan thing of coming up through the toilet mm. bowl with a katana. The man from <laughs> RBS. Um. <laughs> um, Dr. Luger, Herr Professor Dr. Von, von Coronen Von Dude arrives. He does, yeah. Mm -hmm. He does. He walks straight into the fucking scene. I love I love everyone in this movie. Actually, I I massively enjoyed this. He's a Nazi scientist. Strago's like, oh, we we've been looking for you for quite some time, and he goes, so of Nuremberg, and then carries on. With the rest <laughs> that's, of that's an incredibly it's hard like, line to just go. Hi, I am wanted for crimes against humanity as a flex, <laughs> as the first thing you say is. He puts so, it on his Tinder just, profile for real. Yeah, <laughs> location question mark. Oh, interesting. Um, and he takes him to a big wall map, and Strago like goes, oh, "I bet you remember one of these from the bunker, right?" And <laughs> you get this sort of perfect like top secret line where he essentially goes, "Oh no, thank you. I've seen maps before. It's <laughs> it's just a regular I've studied ass many map maps in world. my time. What, dude? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just." <laughs> Because of being a Nazi, <laughs> like, it's a thing that they love to do. I know, I know. One of the reasons why they were evil was the map. Walking into a room with just like a big map of the world on and being like, huh? Huh? 
Nazi. <laughs> what? Just like, ah, yeah. oh, this takes me That's back just to the, the days. You see, he's filming a really <laughs> big Paul Joseph Watson video. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> maps are Nazi coded. This is just facts now. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, Mia Mulder, uh, about your latest video. Um, but so, so, um, Doctor Doctor Luger, no, Doctor whatever the fuck this guy's Cronin. name is, Doctor von Cronin. Doctor von Cronin. He once Dr. had a plan, Cronin, yeah. um, which was to oh, yeah, use a plan to use nuclear bombs in the ocean to divert the Gulf Stream. Freeze the Northern Hemisphere, turn Greenland into a tropical island, move the Third Reich to Greenland, put missiles on Greenland, and hold the entire world hostage. Sort of like yeah. a less ambitious iron sky. And, yeah, and, uh, and Strago's going, I thought this plan was fucking sick, actually. I know Hitler <laughs> yeah. said this was yeah. weirdo shit, but I am so on board with this. Yeah, Mr. Hitler did not listen. Thrush has been listening is the line. And it's like, yeah, no shit, Hitler didn't listen. This is a dumbass plan. In in fairness, Americans going, well, Hitler didn't listen, but I think it's a good idea, is basically their pitch to Werner von Braun. And that worked. That's so true. I don't see any reason why the diverting the Gulf Stream wouldn't work. Plus, also, it would make Britain uninhabitable. Once well, more the Gulf Stream goes up, so, mm, yes, exactly. it comes down. Also, Jack Palance's sort of method of acting for Strago here is like interesting to me because he's trying to convey what I would suggest is like effeminate, right? But also very uncomfortable because mm -hmm. he's got the shit. Mm -hmm. And the way that he does this is a kind of like constant restlessness and also um, moving your mouth too much. He he looks like Viola Davis doing Michelle Obama. Like his, he's moving his lips about eight times as much as he needs to, and it's really distracting. It's all you can look at in the scene is, well, Hitler didn't listen, but, and it's like... My, huh? my read on Strago, um, and this gets more and more apparent throughout the movie, is that he is just a guy who's been bluffing the entire time, and it's somehow oh, yeah. still all working, and he's just waiting for the other shoe to drop, like, in every scene he's in. He's he has a high card, and he's like raising higher and higher every year. Uh, yeah, every he time looks like fucking. So. This is a horrific um, comparison to make to a great actor, but he's quite a lot like Mads Mikkelsen in fucking Casino Royale, and he's just yeah, like nervous yeah, and true. getting scared of every scene. If they had had the bravery to make Le Chiffre have IBS, mm -hmm. Casino Royale would have been an even more sort of genre. Well, Mr. Bond, movie. I don't consider myself to be in danger until I start shitting blood. <laughs> <laughs> Bond is like sweating, having been poisoned, and is like th like throwing himself away from the table. Meanwhile, the Shifu is doing the same thing because he had some dodgy prawns. I hope our little game also, isn't another... causing you to perspire. <laughs> a little effort, some tablet really... in his fucking drink every time. So the Shifu, you've changed your underpants. <laughs> 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 Another really distracting thing, by the way, is that Von Cronin looks alarmingly like Eric Honecker, which just sets me up for like, good morning, Libazana. Um, but so he's sort of like, he's gratified that Strago like appreciates his genius, right? And he's like, oh, I think we can do business together. At which point they are interrupted by Luger going, uh, yeah, there's two uncle agents on the thing. We've, we've heard from our sort of like wandering radio dipshit. Mm -hmm. Um, you gotta but have they're them. gonna be they're, they're gonna be coming through the village of Tafauna on their way here. Uh, to which Strago is like, okay, we'll beat them there and then kill them. Obviously, do I have to tell you to do everything? Um, at this point, we go to the beautiful village of uh, Studio Backlot, Sicily. This is um, okay. This movie's really, really got a problem with Italians. <laughs> This movie is like yes. remarkably yes, racist does. towards Italians, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we spend much of the film with it. This is like live and let die for Italians, like it, <laughs> because the, what's happening here is that there is a procession through the the city of Studio Backlot. Yeah, Catholic, in order you know, to they do this, let a priest do a grand opening of a new pizzeria. <laughs> yes. And that, this is Italian culture, yeah. as I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> They've got like a litter carrying a fucking statue. <laughs> it's yeah, and it's gonna go appreciate the pizza. This is this is culture, right? This mm -hmm. is these are the ancient cultures of the Mediterranean. That's right. Um, and and so we're introduced to Pia, yeah. a young woman carrying a giant golden pair yeah, we're of scissors to who immediately Pia, catches Solo's who's eye. carrying the fucking scissor blades from Kill the Kill. 
And it's just, <laughs> just like walking on the side. I'm like, oh my God. She's not dressed in much more than Ryuko either. Um, it's not Senketsu, but, that's fucked yeah. up. I love you guys so fucking much that you know what that you know me. I, I just want to say I want to stop the entire it's show. Not, it's, it's not that far of a and reach. Say I love you guys. I just want to say I love you too. Mm. Just holding a big pair of scissors. Yeah. I might even put. Like, I might even Photoshop Senketsu onto her and make that the episode art. Amazing. While she's holding the scissors. Mm. But as as Solo and Kuriyakin are like looking at her, they are interrupted by the arrival of one of my favorite things in a '60s spy movie, which is. Four dudes, all in hats, all black, by the way, um, in mm-hmm. the classic Mercedes evil spy car. Yes. The goon car, uh, baby. The, like, the Finto. I think it's like, like a W108 or 9. It's the car that says evil, like, evil spies. Like, a guy is going to lean out of the window of this with a submachine mm. gun and, like, shoot at you wildly. Um, that car. It's and great. they have a gunfight. And they do. It's a great gunfight. You mm. get the sort of, like, uh, posing with one arm out shooting. You get the kind of, like, Punching the pistol out into the air as you fire it, kind of shooting. Uh, a, a sort of random Italian civilian gets shot. Solo runs into the pizzeria, which is then blown up with a grenade by Luger. Mm. He just sort of like gently tosses a grenade in there after him. And the next shot is Solo's arm under a pile of rubble, suggesting that he has been killed. Mm. Uh, Kuriakin steals a horse. Hmm. Yeah. This is the other thing. I guess they must have had a lot of stuntmen around who had done westerns. I mean, you know, Jack Palance aside, yeah. because uh, a sort of like Kuriakin double, because you only see the back of his head, like effortlessly jumps onto a horse from a standing start and, and rides yeah, away. Yeah, that was fucking horse, sick. Bareback, too. Never seen again. Yeah, I'll say yeah. the horse is seen again, we, because the next time we see Kuriakin, he's lying, like, spying on on a on the uh, winery where Strago works, and then the horse is, is just kind of grazing in the background. Oh, is the horse still yeah. there? Oh, I missed no, that. No, the horse, the oh, horse is sweet. still there. It's cute. Oh, mm. delightful. Um, yeah, he's taking care of the horse. So, it's lovely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. What's next? My next note simply says, yes. oh, hell yeah, girl, love her, which does not help me very much remember what yeah, happened. My one says, next. oh, she's a freak freak. So yeah, we're basically yeah. talking about oh, the same thing. Oh, yeah, event okay, here. right. So so, so Luca reports in, um, uh, yes, and, and Strago is, is sort of dismayed at the news that they've only managed to kill one Uncle Agent, and the other one is just loose. And so he's like, this organization doesn't tolerate failure. Miss Dykton... Uh, my sort of like inappropriate secretary. It's time for you to do the thing, and she's like immediately no no breaks, unzips her dress at the thigh to reveal a like thigh holster for a stiletto, and I'm then always doing this. she just she's on board mm-hmm. like instantly, mm-hmm. minute one second. She even one. says thank yes. you to him for like allowing her to do this. Yes, in a sexy voice. Do, do you do you recognize this actress by the way? I I I do. Um, it's, uh, it's Janet Lee, aka uh, the woman who got stabbed in the shower in Psycho, and oh, a bunch of other shit, stuff. Nice. Um, I I didn't recognize her in this at first, mostly because she's playing it so evil and horny. Mm. Um, she does Zenya on a top uh, shit. She kills people and gets off on yes! it. Yes. She 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 looks him in the eyes and she tells him to run, and then uh, when he does, she she throws the stiletto perfectly between his shoulder blades. And, like practically uh, in, in comes voice, on like, the spot, standing up. Yeah, she comes. She comes. One hundred percent. It just goes um, to show as well that like Goldeneye came out in like nineteen ninety whatever, and really hadn't moved on in terms of its like conception of what a female villain could be in about thirty years. This, this film may be retroactively depressed about Xenia and Goldeneye. Oh yeah, it's like deadlier than the male shit. Um, at this point, we cut to Kuriakin and his horse in a field, watching the Strago winery, um, and he calls Waverly and is like, "Yeah, um, so Solo and I got separated. I think you got blown up. Um, it's looking pretty heavily guarded here. I don't know what I can do about it." And Waverly just sort of goes, "Yeah, figure it out. Bye." Yeah, Waverly's a fucking you. asshole in this film. Waverly's a <laughs> yes. cunt in this film. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I'm not doing shit. Well, he's like, well, you figure it out, I guess, won't you? I'm not really spending any more time on this, to be honest. I just spin my globe table. <laughs> Hours of entertainment. Listen, listen, um, Kiriakin, you're the only good agent we have. If you can't figure this out, then yeah. <laughs> quite frankly, we're fucked. <laughs> a guy creeps up behind Kiriakin, and we get a great little fight scene mm-hmm. where he, like, punches the guy, like, you know, sort of, like, cold across the room. It's great. 
Um, Steals then... his uniform. Uh, but meanwhile, Solo is being uh, yes. nursed back to health by Pia, the pizzeria girl. Um, there's a really funny bit where someone says, how are you? And he says, Trey Bian, gracias. Yeah, really good. <laughs> oh, she, she goes through his wallet and finds a bunch of money, which she takes as uh, like compensation for the pizzeria. No, it's, it's so because good. Of <laughs> she she opens thieves. it up and she's like, she looks at the big wad of money and she's like, well, I'm a poor girl. And then she like, starts putting it back and she's like, but I am an honest girl. And then she takes like a few notes out of it and it's like, and this is uh, interest. <laughs> She, she, she also, uh, of course, nice. when she uh, like notices that he's waking up, he has like a towel on his head, which is very lucky for her that she can't see the big sex percentage chance mm-hmm. on his forehead, mm-hmm. which is now approaching 100. Um, she goes, Mamma mia. <laughs> and because of the problem that this film has with Italians, I count five instances of different characters saying this mm-hmm. in this movie. Mm-hmm. It comes up and a lot. Every single one of them hits like this. Also, yeah. again, because she is Italian, she of course has family who are in the mafia in the US. She has like posters of them on the yep. walls. Yeah, this is the other thing. This is what what's so funny is she has pictures of their FBI wanted posters with their names, the Stiletto Brothers, insanely hard names. Sick. But their nicknames are Fingers. Uh, forget the other one and feet. Yeah, it's like feet stiletto. <laughs> feet um, stiletto. <laughs> yeah, and then when when Solo asks her about this, she's like, "Oh yeah, these are just pictures of my uncles," which is a, a, an incredibly funny thing to my mind to say. Like three framed pictures of your uncles. They're all Robert Vaughn. Um, and yeah, that they they're in the prohibition business in America. Um. And, you know, we're all very proud of them here. Um, but uh, meanwhile, Elia has stolen the guard's uniform and he's trying to infiltrate this winery. Um, Miss mm-hmm. Dykton sees him and is like, yo, you're fucking hot. And he's like, uh, cheers. Thanks. Like, I've got an OnlyFans. Feel free to sub. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, don't be weird. At this point, I wrote down, damn, wish my boss was a catastrophically horny, sexually sadistic older woman who carried a knife everywhere. But you On can't this have podcast, this mine life. is. Um... Yeah. I was talking about you, Alice. Hmm. I know, but I'm I'm still processing how I feel about that, particularly older. Um, are we not, are we, are we, I thought. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I think it's that far apart. <laughs> Dev's the youngest of us, right? I'm I, definitely the youngest. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, I, no, it fits. It fits. I can't argue with it. It's just uh, changing the way that I feel about some things, is all. Um, but so Kuriakin, uh like, has to sort of. Uh, you know, uh, let her perv on him. Yeah, basically. Well, he's he's carrying this big thing of like supposedly masala wine over his head. We discover it's actually um, heavy, heavy water. That's right. Do you- yeah, the, <laughs> the echolalia progresses. <laughs> it's such a good. <laughs> Two bubbling fools! Have you any idea what one bottle of that heavy, heavy water is worth? <laughs> It's like so clearly <laughs> dubbed over that I thought it was like a flubbed line. Yeah, me too. And, but, but then Waverly I, says then heavy, Waverly heavy later, later on, and I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. It's the heavy, heavy water. It's like heavy water, but it's heavy. This yeah. water is so I, I, fucking heavy, dude. It's why it's difficult to carry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so Kuryakin gets yelled at by the same officer who's like, you know, aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? Where's your birth certificate? You can't come in here. Yeah. You can't just identify mm-hmm. as a mm-hmm. guard and so on and so on. And then Kelia, uh, Elia has the correct response to this, which is just punch him in the face and run. Yeah. Yes. Right. Uh, immediately leap over a fence. Mm-hmm. Um, we, he gets another phone call with, uh, with Solo where I love their little sort of like old married couple yeah. banter because. So, Solo tells him, oh, I'm being nursed back to health by a beautiful Italian woman, or whatever, and, and Solo just goes, oh, I should have known. Mm, yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's just like Solo a great little moment. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, you knew what like, I was I am know what like I'm this, about, and man. I won't change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't find Solo, I hope he's okay. Yeah, obviously I'm in the arms of a beautiful Italian woman, don't worry about me. I'm fine. He's like, alright. That's right. <laughs> he just gets on so, a fucking mission on his own. As so- <laughs> As Solo is about to leave, the search kicks in for Kuriakin mm-hmm. because they all think Solo is dead, but they know Kuriakin is like around and has infiltrated them and escaped. That's right. Um, and the town is suddenly filled with soldiers, very gently knocking on doors with rifle butts because they don't want to break the prop doors. Um, and uh, so Solo, Solo has to hide under Pierre's yeah. bed. 
Um, yes. And there's this, there's this very funny moment where the soldiers burst in, they check under the bed, they drag him out, and then they go, I'm terribly sorry, <laughs> this isn't the man we're looking for. <laughs> yeah, because they're looking for Kuriaka. It's just a kind of normal, so, like, dude hiding under a bed. Yeah, but, like, so during Pier- this, Piers Nonna sees him hiding under the bed as, like, my, my daughter's been dishonoured. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. initiates um, a shotgun wedding. She says it's time to begin yeah, the she- killing. Yes, she she it's literally a shotgun room wedding. She has the side by side. And it's like, buddy, you're <laughs> marrying so- this fucking girl. Yeah, and Solo tries to call Elia for help because, again, he's bad at his job and Elia's good at it. And he manages to get a message out, but the whole time she's just like dunking on him for talking to himself. And she's like, "Oh, you, you know, th- this is going to be my grandson-in-law," and he like d- talks <laughs> the, to nothing. The line is so fucking funny. He he calls up Elia and he's like, "Yes, Napoleon, how is your burgeoning romance?" Uh, it threatens to burgeon too far. Do you know where the car is? Hmm? Hmm? I hate when my burgeoning romance threatens to burgeon too <laughs> it threatens far. Threatens to burgeon and... too far. Do you know where the car is? Hmm? Hmm? Yes, so I, I, I also mm-hmm. hate when that happens. Uh, Get the so, fuck. <laughs> bring the fucking car. So, so um, <laughs> bring the car around front. Uh, Solo, me know you're there. Solo calls Elia. Elia drives the car around the front as Solo's being like shotgun <laughs> married to this girl, uh, and, then and then Solo's like, "Whom's among us has not done this?" Solo leaves like James Bond from the Spectre. Yes, he does. <laughs> he. E- he exits that relationship by like fully jumping from the window through the window mm-hmm. into the car and driving away. It's a good away. jump too. It's not like and when Rip did it and just sort yeah. of oh fell out. <laughs> He's like, excuse me, and it just yeah, legs it I, through the fucking window. I leave a relationship like Rip Torn does. I, <laughs> I am sort of like bundled visibly unconscious and not moving out of the window. I just fall into grass mm-hmm. like about three floors below. Um, so the window as falls on you as you go down. Um, yeah. Oh my god. As they're <laughs> so leaving, uh, Solo is like, I feel pretty bad about this. We should, we should probably go back because I have, you know, dishonored this woman for life. Even though he didn't have uh, sex know, with her, she... he's like, well, everyone's gonna think that she's, you know... And, like, the Italians, fairness, they sacrifice can... girls who do this, I assume. Um, mm. Can it's, you it's a, blame It's a brutal anyone? culture down here in far-flung Sicily. They all kill this <laughs> yeah. girl for this. But can you blame anyone for looking at Robert Vaughn as Napoleon Solo? A man who is, like, sex now? Hmm? <laughs> Every time he enters a room. A man who enters a room with the sort of air of... Am I going to have sex in here? Last scene entering your granddaughter's room in the middle of the night. When she was naked. And going... Yeah, they pull him out from under the bed and you see the the sex chance counter on his head ticking down. Mm. Like, oh. (laughs) He's about to be married and it's hitting like 20, 15, 13. He's about to be married and he's just like thinking about the honeymoon. It's like ticking up very slightly. Uh "Ah, Mm -hmm. Maybe I could swing this. Maybe I could. (laughs) <laughs> but <laughs> and it's like y- yeah, yeah. I I think I would also consider that my granddaughter maybe had not had a sort of like fully honourable evening. Oh yeah, no. He maybe. even he even says this as well. He's like, I dec- I can't expect you to understand. I'd be thinking the same thing in your position <laughs> to himself. Yeah, I I have seen myself. He's like, yeah, not, um, not unreasonable. Yeah. Um, but fortunately, where, where Elia's yeah. accent cuts out mid-line, because David McCallum ADR'd in the second half of the line but forgot to do the accent, which is extremely funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll come back in, but I'm not gonna do the accent. The accent's extra. I'm not far- <laughs> to, <laughs> the to, to try and discourage you from getting me to come into ADR any more lines. Mm. I'm making it a sort of policy now that when I do, they will be Scottish. <laughs> um, yeah, it's weird that you did that on Chang as well, of- but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at this point, uh, we go to Piers Nonna, and Piers Nonna knows exactly what to do, mm. which is start the killing. You call yeah. the Stiletto Brothers. Mm. It's time and to we start have the some killing. fun with this sequence because this movie thinks correctly that the idea of an old gangster is the funniest shit yeah, in the world. Yeah, and it's fucking right. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. It's so um, good. <laughs> we get a long montage of the various Stiletto Brothers being being the called first Stiletto in. Oh, sorry. Fingers yeah. uh, is he he's watching his absurdly loud film projector. Yeah. So it's nice to know that this is like a consumer technology. Um, he's watching like old gangster movies, Public Enemy or whatever, um, and being tormented by his wife, whom he hates. His bitch wife, uh, yeah. yeah. Hate, hate wife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hate the wife. Literally, 
I don't think there's a single line to his wife that he doesn't start with "shut up." Yeah. Um, even he gets even when he gets the phone call. Even when he's on the phone, he goes, "Shut up!" No, no, not you, <laughs> daughter. Just my wife. <laughs> he he is told of Pierre's fate, and it's like, okay, I'm I'm, I'm going to put the boys together for this. His wife objects, and um, he does the sort of uh, public enemy Cagney thing of like smashing a grapefruit in her face as a joke, it's like a cream mm-hmm. bun. Um, as she looks at the camera. She breaks the fourth. Yeah, wheel. it's it's yeah. it's weird. I, I I think it's the same actress, maybe. Um, I, I think so. It, it's also it's it's weird how the grapefruit bit in the Public Enemy is remembered because if you go back and watch it, it's not like this sort of it's not as sadistic as this. Like he just sort of like shoves her in the face with it, whereas remembered now is like sort of like grinding a whole fruit in a woman's face. It's weird. Um. Anyway, so he's like, uh, I'll put the boys together, and the next boy is. I, I gotta believe this is Feet. Because mm-hmm. he's um, dancing. Feet, yeah. That makes sense. Yes. Um, feet, who is teaching dance lessons at an old folks' home for even older folks than him. Mm-hmm. Um, and the second he gets the news, he just, like, drops everything. Mm-hmm. He's on some Professor Chimp shit. Yeah, he's been he activated. Is activated. He is committed to this program. Mm-hmm. He just walks out. He, he leaves like Kronstein, actually. He's, like, sort of mid waltz or whatever. He gets the telegram. He's like, all right, great. Leaves. Mm, yeah, it's perfect. Um, and the last guy is in prison, uh, and he also just like leaves. He, yeah, he just leaves. He's like, yeah, it's honor, and they're like, all right, out you go, big man. Go fucking kill some guys for your daughter-in-law <laughs> or yeah. whatever. Wa- it's good. Waverly. Waverly has to brief Solo and Kuriaka now that they're back in the states. Um, Solo does tell him, "Oh, hey, I- I'm mixed up with this Italian girl," and Waverly just kind of raises an eyebrow and says, "Well, I'm sure an uncle agent would never do anything improper." To which. Two movies ago, you pimped out your niece to this man. Yeah, because he kept doing things improperly. Yes, yes, and this this didn't make an impression at all. You're just he reckons get, he solved I, I, it. I, I, hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He's like, oh yeah, um, well, you so he says, do anything go, He's like, we've, he's cured now. Yeah, we've he says, cured go it. to Chicago, mm-hmm. find out what they're doing with this heavy, 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 heavy water. Um, <laughs> yeah. Kuriakin, much like a Telegraph columnist, you will have to now pretend that you are a member of the working class. <laughs> they have a really funny joke here, which is they're gonna get him to be, go undercover as a longshoreman. And he's like, uh, "Well, I've never done that before. We will need this, and it's a union card, which I yeah, like." Real good. Um, mm-hmm. So. Uh, Kuriakin goes undercover, he, like, goes and opens a bunch of crates. As he does, Miss Dykton sees him out of an upper window in the warehouse, and is like, oh man, I'd definitely kill him. Um, opens a wall panel, which, like, switches around to reveal a brand new G3 rifle, by the way. Uh, the 60s were a better time. Um, and at this point, she's, she's sort of like, she's lining up shots on him. Uh, and she is interrupted by Italian Americans, bracket stereotypical. Um, That's right. I get a lot out of this like, scene. Mm, <laughs> this a half I really dozen like of these this. guys. And essentially, what they do, they're all wearing hats. None of them are green. Oh, you best believe and... none of these fucking hats are green. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and one of them goes, All right, just go in there and do some slapstick bullshit on him. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> give him the fucking Chicago treatment, and the Chicago treatment appears to be uh, a three ring circus. Mm. It's perfect. Yeah, um, it's really funny because um, because Elia, they try and jump Elia, and Elia like says, "No, I don't, come on, I don't want to fight you." He's like, "Come on, you're an old man. I don't want to do this." And like he's like trying to hit Elia, and Elia's just like really easily stepping out of the way, and then just like runs without hurting any of them. It's really sweet. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's point a guy where... who has like a Tommy yeah, gun. Yeah. And Elia has what I can only describe as a sort of a, a baffling, like a maneuver, a move, right? A tactic. Yeah. Where he, <laughs> he takes off his hat, his little longshoreman's cap, not green, by the way, throws it up in the air. And I, I don't know why, but the guy just like riddles the hat with bullets and is genuinely stunlocked, like shooting at nothing. Multiple seconds. Like, there's no mm, way yes. he thinks... I just think it's nice that the stimulus response gangsters from Goldfinger mm. have gotten a full spin-off movie. I think it's Yeah, this guy's AI a is short-circuited by this. Yeah. It's yeah. just genuinely have a... unloads on this fucking hat for so long. 
And the whole time, Miss Dykeson is like leaning out of an upper window, like, you know, one hand jerking herself off, the other hand trying to sight up Kuriakin. Mm. And every time she has a perfect shot, it is interrupted by an Italian American man. And you see her getting more and more frustrated by this, which I really like. And at the end of it, she's eventually like, I fuck it, I'll just walk downstairs so this doesn't keep happening to mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Ilya throws a pineapple at them, and they all panic because they think it's a grenade. It's I I have I don't have an explanation for this other than the stimulus uh, response. They just it, he yeah, throws a pineapple at them, and they go, "It's chips. a pineapple!" And then like all jump um, mm-hmm. behind yes, cover. Not and entirely just, clear. Anyway, uh, so Sono <laughs> appears, and uh, they're captured by the mafia, and they're like, "Look, you're going to go to a wedding. You're going to marry Pia, or we're going to kill you." And Solo is driven away. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elia puts his hands down because the mafia are gone, and then someone immediately puts a gun to the back of his head, and he's like, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" Yeah, he's just—he's like <laughs> he, properly frustrated. He's having a day. He's having a day, uh, and and he's delivered to Miss Dykton, who is we have seen is a sexual sadist, and he 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 gets suspended from a forklift and like electrocuted for a bit. Uh, you know, been there, not as often as I'd like. Um, it's been by a dog, and <sighs> come now. Um, no. This is gonna come up every time, and the the the, the dog bites like me. I promise was not. Accident, to. Right? <laughs> okay, 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 that's the last. You're on, right, that is. You've you've squashed the beef with the dog. Like it's it's well known yeah. now at this yes. point. Unless yeah. a character I, I, in a I'm film is bitten by a dog, I will not bring it up again. I will not bring it up again. I'm prompted. Trying to like, yeah. I, I need like a, a website that tells me before I watch a film now whether or not a character is bitten by a dog. So you so can I just can... be like, no, this one. I, d- I don't feel like doing that one today, boys. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we can do something else. I don't know. So they take Solo to uh, a, a nightclub, the perfect location for a mafia wedding. I know that this point obviously... says, I feel like there was a Nazi scientist a while ago. I think he's he's around. He's God. been sort of like. Fangirling for Miss Dykeson, like he's he like, oh, we would have been proud of her in the old days. Yeah. Uh, he he appreciates a bit of torture, you know. He knows what he likes. Yeah. Um, but, but we get we get Solo's but, wedding. Um, and I've got my mm, note is which which I say go for line. it, honestly. Yeah. Join yeah, the mafia. Yeah. They, Seems pretty cool. They ask him a bunch of times. Do you, do you want to go to a wedding or a funeral? Uh, and he's like, ah, well, I don't know. Uh, but they have this great line. I'm not Italian, you know. It's all right. Try to be proud, anyway. <laughs> you can be an ally, man. You can be an ally. It's okay. You don't have to actually <laughs> yeah, be. That's what the I ally is. That's what proud. the I stands for in LGBTQIA+. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah, know, gay, someone, bisexual, someone transgender, you know, questioning Italian. Maybe <laughs> Italian, and you got to think before you spread hate. All right, this is why we do the Pride Parade at San Gennaro every year. Um, <laughs> Most important colors in the um, rainbow are red, white, and green. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That is right. Um, One in every three people is Italian. <laughs> mm-hmm. That sounds right. Yeah. Um, so they're about to get him married, against, sort of against his will, and then um, Strago and the boys rock up. The fact that Strago is presumably also Italian and like not Italian American but fully Italian never really comes up. Isn't mentioned. He he. He, his allegiance is to business. He's betrayed his Italian roots, you know, and I think that's sad. Um, it's a little bit like sort of more more Italian than the Italians themselves on these Italian Americans, um, because he holds them up. He tries to take Solo at gunpoint, and then this results in a gunfight, which he has to interrupt with the expedient of "I have a bomb if you don't let me leave with Solo," and I guess also Pia because we're doing this now. <laughs> I will blow up the entire nightclub with you. Yeah. It makes sense that he'd take Pierre as insurance. Yeah, meanwhile, Solo and Pierre are like sure. cowering under a table, and it's just like holding each other quite close, actually. Um, yeah, that's sweet. That's quite nice. I also, I also like that Strago has done this himself. Um, I think it takes a lot mm-hmm. of a lot of her to be able to lead from the front like this. Hmm. Um, Absolutely. I also, I think there's one point where where one of the Italian guys calls Solo a honky. I didn't get the drop. <laughs> they, might have, they might have called him Hokey, but I swear to God on high, at one point... Take this Hokey out and waste him. Like, genuinely, I believe it at one point. <laughs> it's a good. <laughs> so, like, right, right on the knife edge of when Italians were white or mm-hmm. not, you know? The um, movie goes back and forth, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it was changing as they were filming <laughs> it. it really done. They were getting, yeah. like, a guy to come in every day on set and be like, alright, are Italians white today? And he was like, 
Ah, uh, not today. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and they do this sort of like Italian, like uh, biting their finger thing at him in unison, which I believe is to signify that you know they have declared vendetta. Fucking right, Shakespearean on, uh, shit! Like I bite yeah, my fully. thumb at you, on sir. Strago. Genuine. Yeah. Strago, who who is Sicilian, <laughs> is like the fuck. Did, the fuck is, <laughs> what? <laughs> he lives that <laughs> kind like... of peasant bullshit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why are you biting your finger at me? Um... So, so Soto Strago. gets away, but now Strago has uh, mm -hmm. Elia and Pia. When we go back to Uncle HQ, yes. um, and Waverly's like, we're just gonna fuck it. They've, they've gone to an island in the Caribbean, so we're just gonna bomb the shit out of it. Fuck Elia and Pia. Fuck this whole Monroe shit. Doctrine, I'm going home baby. at 4.30 today, and I'm not coming in on Saturday. <laughs> fuck you, we're bombing the island. <laughs> it's 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 great. It's fucking so bad. Like, so it's like, yeah, but What? <laughs> obviously, obviously, this Ilya is, this, accepted the risk because he's an uncle agent. He knows we're expendable, but there's just like a random Italian, Italian, Italian woman. There. Yeah, and he's like, "Yep, yep don't, like, don't consider care. them fully human." It, yeah, it, it they're not white today. They said they're not white. <laughs> so fucking, we're from the island. <laughs> this, this, this makes a lot of the uncle movies make a lot more sense when you realize that the plan B to everything they do is Waverly just sends a fucking bunch of B fifty two bombers to yeah, level everything. Yeah, I didn't realize Waverly had that authority. That's why he's taken so many yeah, chances you... on this Napoleon solo shit. He's like, look, if this doesn't work, we just level the fucking island. He really doesn't have a median option. It's either guy running around on catwalks, like punching people in the head, or. Bombers, right? Nothing in between. So yeah, we've you kind have of, to indulge the first We've come a long bit. way from knockout gas and like we don't kill people to like oh, I'm just gonna fucking kill everyone. Actually, <laughs> he's got two <laughs> buttons on his desk, and it's light attack and heavy attack. <laughs> <laughs> deploy a guy or deploy is, yeah. the boys. That that desk is rotating, so it's hard to know which one he's gonna press. Um, but more of a roulette wheel. But Waverly really. does um, roulette wheel with two squares on it. <laughs> <laughs> two really Wait, isn't that what big squares. Black are for? If you want, if you wanted to divide a roulette wheel into two things, isn't there a ready-made way of doing? No, I anyway, think it would be funnier so if there was just two segments of the roulette wheel. <laughs> That's what we're working with here. The, all the same, all the same segments, but they're all numbered one or two. Yeah. I, we get to the <laughs> no, 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 no. I just want two big segments. Yeah, no, no. Sorry, I misunderstood. Two <laughs> red, big red segments. or black. <laughs> two <laughs> hemispheres here, and that's it. <laughs> we get, we get so close to getting a fucking Napoleon solo license to kill moment here as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he has the maggots like, ready. He's properly ready to Boss, do it. He's like, I'm gonna fucking go you get him. You can't do that. And 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 Waverly goes. All right, fine. Turn in your security Dorito. Um, <laughs> Give me your fucking he, Dorito he, solo. <laughs> yeah, but much <laughs> like M, although he doesn't, he doesn't. He actually is, he's more considerate than M in that he doesn't fire him first before doing this. He's like, you know, you'll have to hurry if you want to get there before the fucking bombers, which uh, I could delay, but and will escape. not. Yeah, yes. and, and then just having not delayed the bombers and instead just sent potentially another agent to their death, he turns around and calls himself like he says, "Alexander Waverly, sentimental, sentimental grandmother." Sentimental. Of the year. Yeah. yeah, he calls himself sentimental about it. It's like, brother, what? What are you doing, man? Sometimes I worry I'm too nice with the B fifty two bombers. Um, Meanwhile, at fresh ah, well, headquarters in the Caribbean, everyone's horny. Sorry, I, I've I've just yes. noticed a note from the uh from the fucking Italian wedding scene, which is Strago is trying so hard to be the primary antagonist of this movie, and he's like really <laughs> struggling to pull the focus back to him. The other thing is like anytime Italians are on screen, everything is notably much louder and more confusing. That's right. Yes. This is a sort of deliberate stylistic choice this movie makes. Mm -hmm. Italians are a sort of like chaos agent in this movie. They their allegiance is more to themselves and their own sort of complicated series of vendetti than it is to uh like any system of order or government including the mafia. Um but Strago but sorry, tries to up his evil credentials by lusting after Pia, who wants yeah. none of it. Yeah, this is this Again, is he's a trying weird to be the primary antagonist. Horny. It doesn't land. Yeah, but it, the way the way that he's trying to play this per the script is uh, he's obsessed with like cleanliness and order, but something in her savage, 
peasant, yeah. dirty, filthy soul. Again, Italians were not white today. Um, <laughs> it, it, you know, speaks to his sort of like uh, baser instincts, his like more, uh, you know, animalistic lust. And so he, he like tries to molest her and she's like, I would throw myself out of a window first. Mm-hmm. Um, at which point they're interrupted by Miss Dykeson, who is visibly disgusted at the idea that Strago may have sex with an Italian woman. Not the not the rape, no. The, just the fact that she is Italian. The fact that he's miscegenating. Looking yeah. at the sign on the um, wall and it says, not white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's it's like, like a big whips sort out of like, his, like, pocket watch and he's like, not white today. All right. It, it's like the sort of terror threat alert thing. It's like it's like a those, roulette you know, wheel but, with two. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, uh, run every- the, the current Italian whiteness level is not, um, and so she's disgusted. <laughs> the UK and- government has updated the national Italian whiteness level to no. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> um, and so, so, but she's disgusted, and she's also jealous is the other thing, because as we've seen, she, she desperately wants, uh, you know, the Strago dick, and is, is not getting any. Baffling, um, baffling, on account of both these characters are gay. Yeah, well, exactly. I, I, I think they've been played that way, not least because one of them is called Miss Dykton. Yeah, I haven't said um, her name genuinely, because I don't know if I can or not. It's D-I-K-E. <laughs> but, like, it's weird to have a Miss mm-hmm. Dykton, and she's just like... Oh, I, I hope get to this later. I hope this man has sex Momentarily, with me. Momentarily, yeah. In fact, yeah, we will get to um, this. Yeah. Um. So, Miss Dykton brings Elia in on a leash. My notes say, "Lucky boy." He just like me for yeah. real. Also is what my notes, notes say. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It's not a very good leash, um, and, but he, uh, yeah. no, it's 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 more of a belt. Yeah, you really, wouldn't really. Wa- yeah, you, you wouldn't want to do that. You want to be careful yeah, with the definitely, buckle, yeah. so you don't want to have one of those at a sort of neck level. But um, yeah, so so she's like, "Oh, what do you want me to do with him? I've been I've been torturing him for a bit in ways that are sort of like off screen, but are left for you to imagine in a, in a sort of a titillating way." And Strago's like, "I I don't care. I truly do not." Um, um, but Strago but- has built the world's biggest remote vibrator. Stra- yes, yes, he yeah. Has. We start getting he... some plans like explained at this point, and they don't follow <laughs> in any meaningful way. Mm. But it's good. He's like, I'm, g- I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take um, Kuryakin and give him the tour. You keep, uh, keep Pia here. Don't do any lesbian shit while I'm gone. Um, this is just like th- the bit in Man with last. the Golden Gun where Scaramanga gives Bond a tour of the bases. Like, this is my plan. By the way, I've got a laser gun. Yeah, just, oh, incidentally, very similar looking I've got a too. laser gun here. Um, and the, the, the laser gun, it, it has... A, okay, so they it's have a, a lot bunch of... tuning forks. He's built a bunch of vibrators in the bowels of the island. Uh, a sentence which gives me two drops, right? First of all... In the bowels. And uh, second of all... Ready to, to vibrate! <laughs> Alternate and... vibrators! <laughs> Alternate vibrators into... <laughs> at, this, at this point... So, Solo is in a speedboat, yeah. sort of doing the maritime Punished equivalent of Solo. coming towards you at walking pace. Punished yeah. Solo is yeah. approaching. He's not wearing any sort of suit at all. He's coming in. He looks tired. He looks haggard, and and mm. fucking <laughs> fucking Strago is like, check this shit out. Uh, makes Ilya look at him, and then activates the machine. And Punished Solo goes up like fucking Castle Bravo. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> he vibrates his shit yes. so much he nuts into an explosion. <laughs> Again, been there not as often as I'd like. I this is the second time in this movie we have flat out killed Napoleon Solo with an explosion, and. Yeah, no, we don't we don't see him again for a bit. So you just meant I'm to like, think he's just fuck dead. He's dead. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they could have just also, built a giant gun on the shoreline, but instead they have this, like, machine which no, supposedly, like, you gotta vibrate vibrates him things apart. from a distance, and it's like, Oh, well, and if I... you're wondering if this comes mm. up again, no. It's called a no. magic wand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, it's like the fucking laser beam from Goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> from Africa on Gun. It's just like, so, this If you out. thought the anyway. wall plug-in magic wands were too, were too powerful, you wait till you stand in front of this thing. <laughs> That's right. Um, also, we have to introduce a guy, a guy who I would very much like to award some sort of Kronstein just for vibes alone. Uh, in the command center of the vibrator, there's a, the, the, there's a captain, I guess you would describe him as, who is wearing the fit that most of the guards are wearing, which is a blue, like powder blue jumpsuit. 
with Fine. the thrush love a, logo love a on it unicolor jumpsuit yeah. with the Again, thrush logo if I could on get it. that that would be <laughs> yeah the rules uh, a, a black beret little round beatnik sunglasses and a gray mustache and goatee mm -hmm. yeah and, sick and, uh, incredible vibes he looks like sort of like a more based version of Jamie Heineman combined <laughs> with like the Dom on like a BDSM porn site. It's there's a lot going on there, and it's an incredible look for him. Um, meanwhile, back in the lesbianism chamber, uh, yeah, Miss Dyketon, Miss Dyketon, nominative determinism takes hold, right? And we get a fight between Miss Dyketon and Pia, um, in which she becomes. Extremely horny. I just, I just clipped this drop for my own personal use, to be honest. Oh, yes. I think you should try to escape. She's pulling a knife at this point, also, and, they, and they holding have a it like, under her chin. Which yeah, that's one way of describing. They, yeah, it. It's, they're yeah. like cats. It's like they, they're on all fours, like swiping at each other. They're meant to look like cats, and I'm like, mm -hmm. ah. There's, 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 there's some, there's some grappling and there's such, like a, which led me to write down me and whom. Um, because uh, the other thing about Pia, right, is because she's Italian, she's like barbarically strong in ways that will like come up repeatedly, and so she's sort of more or less able to like easily defeat Ms. Dykeson by just like she sort punches of, like, her out, knocking her over and like holding her down and then punching yeah, her. Yeah, a, a which, scene in which yeah, like right. a, a person who is shown to be like a trained assassin who works doesn't matter specifically doesn't matter. for fresh at like the, the highest level might. versus. Normal Italian woman just loses. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, exactly. I don't Ar know. <laughs> Arms that have been strengthened by nothing but rolling pizza dough. Uh, you know, like, like pissing up, picking up Miss Dyketon and like tossing her and like spinning her around. Like <laughs> Pia can fucking launch a God, pizza dough like odd jobs hat, man. It's fucking <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> and so she she makes it to the to the door. Only for Strago to come back in and just like sort of take the knife away from her because you know all men are stronger than women, even Italian women. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the order goes: men, uh, Italian women, women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and, and, and then sort of go to Miss Dykeson, who is literally having to. She has been left unconscious in the middle of a very wide round conference table. He just starts briefing <laughs> Professor Doctor yeah. von Cronen like yeah, this nothing's is happening. Shit, I'm she, she, like her. wearing like half of her clothes, has to like crawl on her hands and knees off of the table. And when she does get his attention, he's like, "Oh, you're incredibly fired." Like. This organization does not tolerate failure. I got a, um, I, and you can. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, she has previously been used as the assassin to kill a guy who has like failed less hard mm -hmm. than she has just now. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. The guy who yeah. actually fifty percent succeeded. The stiletto, but you know what? Die by the stiletto. You know what, man? I listen. You never think a panther's going to eat your face. So it's true. That is true, and hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. So she, uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't she, think she, she, Thrush she... wouldn't tolerate my failures. Eh, shouldn't have failed then. <laughs> but... <laughs> Moving on, she, he tells her that she's going to have her transferred, which leads me to a, a great drop because she just kind of says, <laughs> "Yeah, that's yeah. in the movie." Mm -hmm. As far as I'm aware, it's unedited. It's, 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 that's. Uh, she she may have said the sentence fur, and I may have clipped it, but Doesn't that's neither right. here nor there. Um, and uh, so she she resolves to sort of like betray him. She leaves. Uh, we we see via sort of close up shot of the uh, the elevator. We just keep filming the other two fuckers from across the room because we don't have the budget to move the camera. Yeah. So we just have the rest of the scene at like twenty feet yeah. distance. Yeah. Like, what? Um, <laughs> It's like we're gonna fucking turn Greenland into a place called Thrushland. Terrible which, name. Interesting. Awful name. And it's gonna be a like a tropical paradise, like Britain is now, uh, mm. and Britain's gonna be uninhabitable, like Britain um, is now. Um, but she, Miss Dighton, goes to uh, Elia and Pia's cell and is like, "Yo, I want revenge. Let's team up." And Elia's like, "Yeah, whatever. I guess. Yeah. Like, as long as you before, electrocute me again, I'll do whatever you up. want, mommy." Um, <laughs> yeah, but be before it before happens. she shows up. Pia is like tending to Ilya, and she's like, "Oh, you're very handsome." And she fucking, in an affectionate way, grabs the bottom of his jaw, 
really fucking hard. Like you can see dents in his cheeks. And you're just like, uh, me and whom? Me and she whom? even says, "Are um, you Italian?" And he goes, "No." Yes, he, he's like offended uh, by the question. Uh, he's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> no, he's Doesn't quite nice he about to, it. You, you, mm. It's like no, no. Yeah. On that day, they they were white, so mm. it was fine. He's like, no, I'm not. I'm just there is there, is, there is another another boat, a fishing boat. Yeah, um, yeah. And we we see yes, that this it, is the, mob, the fucking boys. They're, they're, the mob grandpas, they, they the fucking rescue... the northern boys or the southern Italy <laughs> <Yeah>. boys. <laughs> <laughs> they they rescue Solo like the beginning of the Born Identity. They just haul <laughs> him on board, uh, and also this is the first time that we get feet called by name, which leads me to hey feet. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> I hate hey, that I need feet. that drop, but <laughs> hey buddy, <laughs> just being called that. <laughs> like, None of them have good a, names. A terrifying <laughs> prospect. No, no. Fingers. Fingers is at scissors? least acceptable. You like do yeah. things with your feet. You can like interact with the world using mm. your fingers. Scissors, feet? I well, guess. You, well, you interact with the world with your feet, I suppose. Um, Not as much. At this point, a, pat- a patrol boat shows up, um, and uh, it, uh, Solo's like, "Oh, what are you going? What are you going to do about this?" And they're like, "Ah, oh, it's fine. We did rum running. We just kill him." Yeah, which they yeah. Do. Solo explains like, why he's there, and they have like a little team up moment. Mm. Um, We're going to do clearing the person's dangerous shit. Yeah, they are. Yeah, uh, one of the mob guys scissors, scissors, scissors gets, gets got killed. Scissors gets fucking uh, done in. Mm-hmm. It's a shame. They, they, they capture they capture the captain, uh, Mister Goatee Man. Yeah, they do. And, and he has, what's interesting is he has the greatest line they, read they of all time. They observe the Geneva Conventions. Oh, what's that? Do you have yes, that? Yes, it's this. Stop firing! I give up. Really good. <laughs> really like the yes. room tier shit. Yes. Unbelievable. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and but they they take him prisoner because although Feet wants to kill him, the gangsters observe the Geneva Conventions mm-hmm. and they don't kill a surrendered enemy. Um, at, at this point, it's fifty four minutes twenty three, giving up hope of a green hat appearing. Um, Many, many counts on the hat, but then they go to the island. They infiltrate oh, the man. island. Uh, the man in the green hat, they call him. The man in the green hat arrives by helicopter. That this is Strago's boss, mm. Mister Thayer. He's and, from Thrush Central. Uh, the first mm. time we've seen a proper one, high up in Thrush, I think. Yeah, I cannot stress enough. This is one hour into an hour and a half movie. We get the man in the green hat actually shows yeah. up, and I had a theory burgeoning about this, which is that, like, given that previously we had a spy in a green hat, and the title was one of our spies is missing, but none of the spies were missing, and before that, one of the spies was missing. I was genuinely starting yeah, to consider like- that maybe all of the titles had been displaced by one. Yeah. And then one, this was the scene. one of our spies is missing. Yeah. Spy in the green he hat. He is in a helicopter. He shows up in a helicopter. So, like, I, it made perfect sense to mm-hmm. me. But, no. He's the spy in the green hat. He gets out of the helicopter. Let me tell you about this hat. That isn't... It's fucking barely green. Oh yeah. my god. It's grey! It's fucking grey. And the worst thing is, he is sitting directly next to a guy never who never speaks, never seen again, who is wearing the brightest blue hat you can imagine. If you looked at this guy and told, like, if you looked at these two guys and said, one of these guys has a hat and colour related nickname, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's the guy in the, the, guy yeah, in the, the, blue, man hat in the blue hat and his friend, dipshit Paul, or whatever. <laughs> and But no, th- this is the man in the green hat, which is not that green, and unnamed character. This guy's bright blue smurf ass hat is entirely unremarkable, but everyone looking at this grey hat with a feather in it, the feather isn't green either, is like blinded by the fucking green wavelengths coming off of this. This is a green ass hat. They're just they're like fucking dogs. They can't see the colours. Looks um, shit. And he only wears it in his arrival scene. Yeah. He takes off immediately and it he never just comes takes back. it off. Also, I was quite excited to see like a big boss of Thrush. I was like, oh, we've not met one of these guys before. Like, I imagine he'll be pretty sinister, but he comes out of the helicopter and he's like, yo, what's up? <laughs> I like this. I really <laughs> like this decision. I really like this because it's such a like work jolly. It's like I'm here on a fact finding mission to the Caribbean island. You know, yeah, I'm fair. I'm definitely not having a day yeah. off as a waitress is putting a like a a, a flower garland yeah, he's around. Wearing a that's not a joke, like, listeners. Like, that literally happens. He wears it for yeah, the entire like, rest of the movie. Yeah. Also, 
<laughs> Why is it called like, a spy in I'm... the fucking lay? Like, what is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> Looking at this guy not wearing a hat and being like, yo, that's the man in the green hat. They call him the man in the How... green hat. Why? Why do they call him this? What? We do get a really nice bit where um, he sees Miss Dighton. He's like, oh, Miss Dighton, you're one of our best agents. Thanks a lot. She then leaves. Um, and uh, mm. Strago goes, oh, I'm really sorry about her. Well, she had to write a, quite a damning report about Miss Dighton for being too horny. And I'm going to request that she's transferred. Mm. Um, and the man in the green hat just goes, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Probably easy to just kill her, though. Save all the paperwork. And he's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Um, yeah, he's so, still a so she, guy. Yeah. He's just on holiday. <laughs> oh, yeah. Miss Dykton like sneaks downstairs and like uh, d- d- brings Ilya up to the party as the entertainment. The idea is he's going to be like tortured to death in front of them for fun, like you know, Salo or whatever. Um, but and and she's like, oh, we're going to have to clean him up first. Throws in a racist line at Pia because the Italians aren't white again that day of filming, where she's like, I don't know if you could clean her up, which is nice. Like just. A little bit of like being a cunt, yeah. you know, just because you just can. so that you're not like, um, oh, she's had a change of heart and she's good now. No, 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 she's still a cunt. She just hates the other guy more than the uncle guys at this yeah. point. Yes, she kills a guard and she, frees she... Elia. Um, yeah, yeah, she comes again off of this, by the way, just in case that wasn't clear. That is explicit. She's like, mm, delicious. Um, frees Elia and goes, oh, by the way, I am also still a Nazi because she she says, oh, Professor Doctor von Cronin, he's kind of my soulmate in a lot of ways. By virtue of being a Nazi. Meanwhile, um, von Cronen mean- has overheard that they're going to kill her and has come to warn her. Yeah. And he sees sweet. her helping Ilya escape and he's like, ah, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> this is the worst I've been owned since May of 1945. <laughs> it's like, I came into. Um, uh, I can't do a fucking voice. Who gives a shit? You know, he barely does, does it either. He's 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 like, you know, I came here to to warn you, and now I've got to go back and warn them about you. I should not have announced this very loudly as a man with a gun is standing yeah, here. Me, and Ilya, extremely loudly. Oh, I'm gonna go warn my boss about you. Getting Mantelli. shot. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah Elia just immediately yes. shoots this Nazi, which is cool. Yeah, fucking based. Total number, like, somewhere in Stalingrad, the big McDonald's-style <laughs> sign of number of Nazis killed by, the by like, Soviet armed forces ticks up by one and like, oh, after a few hey. years off. I'm like, oh, interesting. <laughs> Got another one. And they sort of, like, ding, um, and they're like, oh. Over one million served. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Elia and uh, uh, we get- fucking the horny lady, Dykton, reunites Ms. with Dykton. Solo and the Mafia boys with the Northern boys. Yeah. This whole, the whole time this is happening, we're getting a fantastic sort of like workplace comedy where uh, the the spy in the green hat is like he's having a great time. He's at the party. He's like dancing with women, uh, and <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. And Streko is getting we- like constant updates about how wrong everything's going, and he is <laughs> floundering so hard. Yeah, it's good. he's like everything's fine, sir. Why don't you have another drink? And what's really funny is we get a great little line off of the spy in the green hat where he's like, you know, I've I, I, I've ordered a number of uncle agents executed. Never actually seen one myself, and I don't want to get a reputation as being strictly a desk man, which is legitimately great because, like anything, where where if you take evil organization and turn the focus on the organization part, that's really fucking funny. I always love doing that. Um, it's so good. <laughs> So, but the, the the super friends agree to like raid the island because you know Pia's in there, um, and Dykton Dykton goes up to uh, to Strago's office to try and get revenge, and like he's on his way out of the door, doesn't even stop moving. Pimp slaps her out cold. Yes, he had this genuinely on deck. Genuinely had <laughs> doesn't that break stride. Slap locked and loaded. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's sort of the the actor exceeding the the, the character there. Mm. It's like it's pure Jack Palance is what it is. <laughs> is he just he he walks towards her, slaps while moving, continues walking. She has a she gun. And he doesn't give a shit. Gun. Yes, doesn't matter because he's having any a very man bad day stronger work. than yeah. All women. Yes, yeah. Yeah, um, men, women, men, Italian women, women. Mm-hmm, Three that's right. genders. Um, there you go. Mm-hmm. So. Solo Solo breaks into the uh, the house. There's a sort of unexpected bondage silhouette because he like uh, he has oh. tied Pia up. No, you, you get um, the you get the uh, the team up moment. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because mm. Pia helps Dykton, helps her get up after she's been pimp slapped. Yes, yeah, which... Elia, Elia and Dykton run into this a second, the yeah. Northern boys and, and Solo, and they have like a moment where they're, well, no, they, they have a little get-together, and, and there was a line I quite liked from it, which is that they're sort of like, Solo's like, I'm, I'm sorry, man, I didn't, I didn't think you'd be able to get out ahead of it, and, and Elia's just like, look, I've brought the Kretzia Borgia to this, and you've brought the Mafia. We are, we're in great shape. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Which is great line. such a great. fun line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, because on the way, uh, like, to go and, like, slap Janet Lee unconscious, um, Strago has also sort of, like, um, sort of briefly choked out here for a bit in the sort of like 60s movie way where you touch a woman's neck and she's unconscious for the next scene um and and then sort of like le- left her like tied up behind a screen solo walks in sees the silhouette of a tied up woman and goes is that the elevator and she goes no it's over here why why would that oh, that's be- what the joke was why would a tied up woman be the elevator? This movie, the third act of this movie, makes me feel many of my, as if my evenings brain have been elevated melting. by a woman being tied up. But anyway, um, oh, Elia, Elia um, is still in disguise as a guard in his blue dipshit jumpsuit, and uh, he bumps into yep. Thaler, who's still like, ah, great party. Uh, can I get a tour of the place? And he's like, <laughs> yes, yes, sure. In fact, Thaler introduces himself as saying, "I'm Mr. Thaler from Thrush Central," and like shakes his hand. <laughs> And you can see Elia just being like, I will make my career from killing you. <laughs> yeah, Elia's just he like, even, oh, like, it's hands time to stop him from killing quiet. baby. <laughs> he hands him the assassination opportunity because he's like, so you mean to say that there's only that hatch between us and us and the ocean that would flood this compartment? And Elia's just like, yeah, I guess I'll have to demonstrate it then. Opens the fucking hatch. Um, yeah, and like just fucking like Pierre, power washes this guy. He's just gone. Yeah, This man is not seen <laughs> he is again. Cartured, he's yeah. entirely smooth. No. <laughs> yeah, he's been fucking especially smooth. how they do electrolysis and hurry. Mm. Um, so Pia escapes. She helps Miss Dykton in a way that I wrote down fewer and fewer heterosexual explanations. She's like caressing her and mm-hmm. shit. Um, fewer and fewer heterosexual explanations. <laughs> I think it's fucking yes. says that at the bottom of like one of my doctor's reports from like 2015. <laughs> yeah, we're do- we're doing rule to- and it's it, seeming increasingly like this motherfucker gay. Yeah. <laughs> gay. Um, gay? So, so the missiles are about to be launched to, to divert the Gulf Stream. Yeah. Remember that? It's S- Elias sabotaged it. <laughs> Solo gets uncle chopped. <laughs> Yes, he does. Elia uncle chops a dude underwater, which still works, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, S- Strago, uh, well, Solo wakes up enough to fight the captain. Strago is left sort of like yelling desperately into a dead phone, which I quite yeah, like. Yeah, Strago, like, I like earnestly this is a, like, crying. A, it's just like, launching room! Launching room, please! This is, a, this is a guy whose like only skill is management, who has been deprived of anything to manage. I really like it. Yeah. Um, Again, I, I feel. Like, really solidly, like, he's just been bluffing the entire time and has somehow found yes. himself on a private island with the head of Thrush being like, yeah, I'm going to redirect the Gulf Stream, and no one has stopped him yet. He's, just, he's like, why hasn't anyone stopped me? Uh, <laughs> he's just a company man, you know? And uh, But so Miss Dykeson comes in, because he, she hasn't betrayed anyone except Strago. Like, the, the lesson of this movie is, in part, that sometimes you have to put your trust in a bisexual Nazi sadist. Um yeah. And That's why you support so many she, of them on she... Patreon, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. But I genuinely, I got a Tumblr ask. Oh shit, really? Uh, a, a while back. That's Always like, a bad start. Why, Never a good why start. were your co-hosts so mean to you on the latest <laughs> Kill James Bond? What Sorry. did you do to them to make them deserve this? I... <laughs> to which I'm just forwarding that. What did I do to deserve this kind of shabby treatment? Okay, I didn't realise that it was like that bad. Okay, it's like the nice to Alice Zone sort of from a, now on. Sort of a workplace <laughs> bullying situation here at this I'm so hey, sorry. I'll, I'll tell you this for free. You way. If you guys turn us around and no, hit me with this level of... Um, I'll start crying. Yeah, There's same, no way I won't. Same. The answer <laughs> listeners is because Alice is the only one who can take it. She has to be the it's straight man for this. being a bottom. <laughs> it's the only uh, way it works. Yeah. Uh, but so we have to allow the evil woman to get killed. We can't have any of the good guys kill her. So St- Strago just shoots her and gets, like, shot in turn. Um, and, uh, like, we get a Janet Lee death scene, which is 
concerningly horny and raises a fucking existential question for a 1967 made out of TV episodes movie, which is, what if death is the ultimate act of bottom? What if dying you think about makes that? you come? How about Why that? not say nuts to death? What if? What if you ever like? Yeah, yeah. Like I, she's genuinely like, oh, the pain is delicious. Yeah. Uh, plus, I got to see this guy fail, which is also great. Um, my, my notes and you my know, notes just say that this is like the the perfect inverse opposite of um, Apocalypse Now. She's dying. She's mm, like the pleasure. Yeah, yeah. it rules. Oh, actually, she loves it. yeah, this fucking whips. It's like, this, is, this is coming. Is it's like being you shot know, the by a woman and coming. <laughs> well, uh, um, wouldn't know. They escape. They escape the fucking island. Is what they Presumably, do. Presumably, we just kind of cut um, back to New York. We never see any of these bombers or any of that. We shit, cut back to Stray New York, goes where f- everybody is at. Yeah, gone. A spaghetti dinner. Yeah, th- we together. end on a spaghetti dinner, and also they invited Wait, Waverly. Waverly is fucking Waverly Angloid getting a spaghetti co- dinner. <laughs> This motherfucker Waverly's tried to angloid constitution can't handle spaghetti. You must well, Waverly actively acid, signed off on the, the acid, death of your niece, and you're just there like, hey, hey, spaghetti. The acid in a single tomato would snap this man's heart into a dozen well, pieces. Waverly can't, you can't feed him Mediterranean. Waverly food. is the head of Uncle. He's the section chief. He can't have dinner with fucking mafiosos. Imagine if that one took a photo <laughs> of this. <laughs> It'd be fucking done. <sighs> and then they, I guess, the Italians like lose object permanence on the idea of Pia getting married or whatever because both Kuriak and Anne Solo like each hold one of her hands, and then Waverly tells them off, and the mafiosi tell them off, and Solo ends on a perfect like, ah, eh, what are you gonna do? Face. I, I think what's occurred here is they're like, there's no way we're letting you get involved with our fucking daughter. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care about yeah. the honor <laughs> shit anymore. This is fucked. You Solo cannot be a part of this. Uh, Solo doesn't get pussy for the whole film, no pussy. does he? Jesus, that's true. No, but that's, this he is really what doesn't. Zero Pussy does to an MF. No, the only person who gets pussy in this movie is Ilya. Uh, fucking Ilya. Yeah, he's getting and it's a, a, sort of a femdom 24/7. nature. He gets that non-consensual pussy, which is not oh, yeah. what you want. Yeah. Re- regarding Ilya, also, I do have oh, one final want consensual, note. consensual, non-consensual person. Mm. Mm. Which, mm. Mm. Which is uh, Dave mm. McCallum in the ripped, uh, See, soaking wet black I t-shirt. To be bullied by these Hello. Things. Ah, yes. I, I, I did write down. Th- he does have the long fight scene underwater with like, and I did also write down fewer and fewer heterosexual explanations for this. Genuinely, as well. Um, the, the, the like, the like protagonist meter is moving towards the uh, the the other half of the uh, the of roulette the, wheel, the which is yeah, wheel, yeah. between Solo and... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Solo doesn't fucking do anything. Ely is the one who sabotages the missile launch. Ely is the one who strikes the deal with Dyketon to get out. Solo fake dies two times in this movie. Yeah, he's just around. Solo goes up like a bikini at all test and is not seen for ten additional minutes. Ilya power washes a member of Thrush's fucking ruling body yeah. off of the face and of the earth. And because of this, I, and his reward is a spaghetti he's dinner. He's buried at sea like Osama fucking Bin Laden. I think there's a very... <laughs> <laughs> fuck me, dead. <laughs> I think there's something you notice in, in the, like, the Waverly briefing scenes, right? Which is that they're all wearing the security yeah. Doritos. M, Waverly, mm-hmm. his one says one. Ilya's says yeah. two. Napoleon yeah. Solo's says eleven. Uh, there is it's an explanation really for that, though. And some dipshit is that he um, it was it was in Roman numerals in the first film they did, and he didn't realize that they changed it to actual numbers, so he just picked oh, up the eleven, shit. assuming it was two, and they've just shit. stuck with it the entire time, and then given Ilya two. <laughs> just like <laughs> the, the hierarchy generally goes, Waverly Ilya, nine additional guys, <laughs> Napoleon Solo. <laughs> He's he's got nine partners, better partners he's killed, and this down. is who he's left. I have with. an explanation for this, which which is that um and that also explains why Elia is often so exasperated with Solo, which is that Solo is a junior agent and Elia is training him. I genuinely yeah, he's believe his field this. Training officer, fuck yeah, no, I believe this. So, but th- that is the movie. One statistic that I want to end with is that the number of hats. Seen oh, before we see a green hat on anyone. Mm-hmm. Forty nine, <laughs> and I counted all of them. <laughs> forty nine, non green yeah, hats. The man in forty nine, not green hats. 
At least, it was, a, right. at least it was a nice round number, but it was the 50th yeah. hat seen on screen. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That is Although true. Although it depends how you but count it. Maybe the, have... the bright blue one would be the 50th. <laughs> mm, we have a science-based system on this podcast. Yeah, we do. It's called the SCUM system. It stands for SMARM, Cultural Insensitivity, Unprovoked Violence, and Misogyny. How smarmy is the spy in the green hat? I think um, it's definitely getting a couple of points for the stuff about, like, I'm in the arms of a beautiful Italian lady. And like, yeah, for sure. Not, I, not I that think, much. I think it's... I don't think it's massive. It's not... You don't get as many good lines. It's not written as well as some of the previous ones, mm-hmm. which means it's perversely written to be less smarmy, because <laughs> they don't really get their jokes off. I, I would say this might be, like, a two or a Can three. Can I give it a point for Trebian Gracias? <laughs> Yes. That's pretty good. Yeah, you absolutely can. Three sounds. Three sounds. Three. about right to me. Yeah, let's do three. All Cultural right. insensitivity. Cultural eleven. Um, yeah. <laughs> for oh, my, <laughs> maybe something like there is one thing, ten, but I'll I'll say in its favor is that because it's like you know readily available as a language to have actors speak in, they do have actual Italian speakers speak Italian, and they don't subtitle it or like dub it or anything. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the fucking the nonna speaks like actual Italian, mm-hmm. and it oh yeah they got you a, know, it doesn't really add anything but no it, no it, I think it adds to it yeah there's a there's a great deal of like actual Italian actresses like mm. um, Pia is played yeah. by a genuine Italian actress Leticia Roman like who is sort of made to be like ah oh, my culture is the horny thieves exactly of barbarously spaghetti. strong women um, spaghetti okay, yeah the mob again this is live and let die for Italians <laughs> so I think seven. Six? Yeah, seven's pretty solid. I think it's seven. I think. It's, got, it's got to be a right. seven. Yeah. eleven, but like um, seven is. It's yeah. a yeah. law. Yeah. Then, we, then we would be taking a position that racism against Italians is worse than any other kind of racism. <laughs> I'm happy to take that. <laughs> which I, which I, I only believe when I'm attempting to hit on an Italian woman. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. It's that and have you seen uh, The Hand of God or any other Paolo Sorrentino movie? Those are my, those are my lines. Right? Um, unprovoked violence. I mean. It's Fucking getting high. The only guy we shoot out of hand is a Nazi, so well, um, feels pretty justified. Yeah. That's pretty uh, pretty provoked by virtue of the Nazis. In yeah. terms of like unprovoked um, violence that we are asked to accept, there's very little. Mm-hmm. Um, the mm-hmm. only like major act of unprovoked violence is is them being like, "Well, we'll, we'll just glass the fucking island. I don't care anymore." Well, there's, and there's that's, that. There's slap, that's really that's, bad. Like pimp slap is bad too. He, he, he fucking power washes the the spy in the green hat like at, at no notice. He's thrush. That's unprovoked. He's thrush. He is thrush, but it it is, but it is still an assassination, and he just yeah, it institutes okay. that immediately. Shh, okay, so fine. You got to give it like one point for that, just because he like it seems like a pretty unpleasant death. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. He right. just drowned an unarmed old man. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who is on vacation, mind yeah. you? Um, and then. <laughs> Misogyny. Um, it's going to be pretty high. Women, women are either horny psychos, mm-hmm. uh, aged grandmothers. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. Insanely strong pizzeria operators. <laughs> yeah. So Sorry, those are the three women. It's a very funny phrase. <laughs> yeah, like, like yeah, preternaturally strong, pizzeria strong pizzeria pizzeria. <laughs> <laughs> And also, like, the Baffling. fighting, the, the violence between the women is meant to be sort of sexually titillating yeah, in a way that the violence it's between a, the men is. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, I mean, exactly. That's like Connery Unless you're from really Russia with love shit. With shirt off. Um, yeah. I think it's yeah. going to be pretty high. Like, it's going to be like a six or a seven. I think I would do a six for this, um, certainly. Yeah, 100%. That gives us. I don't think it has enough malice in it to be seven because it's just too. Like it's a total score of seventeen, which isn't isn't the worst man from Uncle Film, which which is still the spy with my face sitting pretty at nineteen, but uh, it's mm. it's one of the worst. Uh, Outstanding. Do you have any awards I do to hand out? Wanna give, I want to give a Kronstein to to Mr. Line Reed, Captain <laughs> Fucking Captain Line Reed. <laughs> yeah, Captain Line Reed. <laughs> I love that. Um, would, I I want to give him the Kronstein. Otherwise, no, nothing. Um. Mm. And God, that's that's the spy in the green hat. At long last, we found we synced up with the title. Movie with the title. The next one is the helicopter spies. I think if there's not fucking helicopter I spies in it, the next one is. Let me, I, let me check just to make sure because they all have the same fucking names. 
Um, of course they so do. We've still got yeah. spies. The Karate Killers is our oh, next shit. one. Oh, shit. We've got Karate Killers. The Karate Killers. We've got Helicopter Spies. Oh, we're fuck. entering the fucking Devon Zone paper. <laughs> we've got How to Steal the World, which is the one my brother wants to come on. Then we've got the 15 Years Later Affair. And then we've got the Modern Man from Uncle Phil. We've oh, got, God. like, we've got, there's so we've many got, more uncles. There's so many uncles. <laughs> Oh, a surface of uncles. If there aren't karate killers in the next one, and quickly, I will not be held responsible for my actions. Right, it seems that um, there are at least two people who are credited as karate killer in this, so mm. it's looking solid. Right, let's We've got go. over two let's more months go. of uncles. <laughs> I fucking love it. Yes, I love it so much. So it's, good. it's fucking great. I'm so glad there's um, more. The next bonus episode, I think... Ink is my pick, mm-hmm. in which case we're going to do all about my mother, unless we can do something else which I might have lined up, which involves the words old and Connery. Oh, no. um, you you can subscribe to that on the Patreon. You don't have to, but we'd like it very much if you did. Uh, and we will see you next time. Bye. Yeah. Thank you for listening to yet another first episode of 2023. Next week, on the free feed, as indeed all of these movies are for now, as it is the winter of content. Still winter, so it's still the winter of content. Um, I actually don't know what the next one is. It's Alice's pick, and she's still trying to grab between two. So um, you'll find out when you find out, won't you? Uh, other than that, week after next on the free feed, that's going to be another man from Uncle. That's going to be The Karate Killers. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Um, obviously, during this period, you don't have to give us any money at all to get every episode that we produce, but some people still choose to, and I would be so remiss if I was to not read out our £15 and above patrons. And those are Christine Fox, Amanda Comet, Freya Aloysius, Gustavo Lira, Jack Holmes, Mike Berg, Thomas Oberhart, Nick Boris, Kentucky Fried Gommy, Yarrick, Nasa Mori, Labour Delenda Est... Commissar Ozymandias, they of thems. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Library Hitman, Beef Crime, Jack Drummond, Jonathan Good, Callan Burney, Max Gamenhart, J. Martindell, Kit Devine, Hell, Lysamesh, Jonathan Siegel, Harrison Fuller, Big Titty Goth Girl, Mothman, Tarp O, George Rohack, Trip, Clara has burned the closet. The closet's no, no longer a problem. Put the closet out of your mind. Alex, Violet, Cybra, Liz and Ash in Florida, a trans robot, men's room Louis, Cass Frass, Bronan, the spy who ruined my marriage, Elizabeth, <laughs> Elizabeth Cox, Om Nom Omni Consumer Products, very nice, uh, Zoe Shepard, Turf Seat Shit and Die Alone, Quinn Valeri, Finn Ross, Alfredo, Wolfie, Big Old Boy, Al Irwin, Robert Greensmith, Millie, Josh Simmons, Lauren Bastin, Roll History Pod, and Artemis Potter and Elizabeth. Thank you for being our wonderful patrons this podcast is Alice, Abigail and Devon our producer is the wonderful Nate Bethay our podcast art is by Matty Lachansky and our website by Tom Allen see ya